the actions are right, the refinement was playing. So again, going back to why we would have done it umpteen years ago, okay, and, and don't don't question the practicality too much. Because when you're stepping forward with a pair of blades here and you're driving forward, it's you're you're cutting into a spear or a pole. You know? Now, this guy's got a spear, he's trying to stick it in my throat and I'm going forward and trapping it. And if you question that too much, we go like, why am I doing that? And I can't answer why that's the move, because I may look it, but I'm not actually through the years old yet. So I wasn't there. So you've kind of just got to go, okay, that's what it's for. Whether it's practical or not becomes a little bit redundant, but I can still be sharp and powerful in my actions. So what you're looking for from, from the action is when you're here and you're double jump down, as you drive, don't open the elbows out. The more you open the elbows out, the more leverage it's going to cause against anything that will be pushing towards you. So your elbows still want to be in, they just come out a fraction. So, there. so what I'm looking for, from a point of view of is it right technically, whether it would work or not, you know, whether somebody coming attacking in here, it would actually cut in or deflect or stop, you know what, I, I really don't want to be testing that. <laughs> you know, what? if somebody said to me, you know, you're going to use weapons, I'd go back to my bodyguarding days and carry a 9mm about browning, yeah. you know, I'd deal with the problem, I wouldn't want to be doing with this with him after. But, but working on the fact that this is what the training's for, um, there is a there is a certain set of rules that we therefore apply. The first is the left the left in this instance is higher than the right. The second thing is they're both equal away from each other. If one is in front of the other, like this, and you were applying it, and you put pressure on both, it will turn it. And if it's going to here, I don't want to turn it. You can't <laughs> turn, not turning it. And you could argue, well, in that case, I'm going to do it here, I'm going to turn it this way. But just because the pole in Wing Chun tends to be a single-ended pole, because it was, it was you know, allegedly used for pushing people off the red junk if they tried to get onto it or trying to get a boat alongside it, or maybe it was used as, like they do, like you see in the End of the Dragon on, on, the, on the pole when they were poling so the, the, uh, between the junks, which is still how they work today in, in um, Aberdeen, Hong Kong, Zion, Hong Kong. Wing Chun poles tend to be single-ended poles, but a lot of martial arts use double-ended poles, so your attacker could quite actually take advantage of the fact you twist it that way and just come around and belt you around the head. So turning it, is, there is no advantage to it at all. So keep them equidistant here, it's critical. Keeping them vertical, because you're not trying to deflect it, you're trying to control it, and keeping it supported. So the first thing is that thumb needs to be against that. Mm. The second thing is look for the pip joint, look at the angle, look for the wrist, look for the elbow, and what I will always do is I would always stand about here, look along the edge of the blade and visually line up this part of the blade and this part of the blade in one line, and then does that also visually pass through the elbow and the wrist. It doesn't have to pass through the shoulder, but the further out your elbow goes, from a frontal view, the flatter that gets, the more likely it is going to do that. Mm. So there's a balancing act, and it's about there. You're creating a V-shape. And if, because you've got your weight on the rear leg, what was the centre line a minute ago should now, because you've sat back, put the centre line through that shoulder. So that, that straight line that was, instead of aiming here, you should fight it about there. That's your criteria. That's all there is to it. And you're driving forward with some meat behind it. You've got to stop it. It's going to sting if you don't. Okay, so that's the first thing. What you're now trying to do is take that weapon Free that weapon up to strike, but control this with that. Okay, now keep going. So here, now, if you look what you've done, your blade is pointing in that direction. So the front of your knife is going that way. The problem you're having is, that if I, if I try to stab you with this, I want to pull this back very quickly and have another shot at it. And you, yeah. Okay, and that's the problem. So the best way to do it, if I can swap places with you, if you hold that, somewhere here, is once I've driven it forward from the centre and I've sat back on my stance, so you can see it's angled through my shoulder, and I've gone to here, okay? And what I want to do is, this knife here, if you take a pen and draw from a point forward and draw a line diagonally going forward and away over the top, and then put your knife on it and follow that line, you will get that short structure. Okay, that structure from here, it's like a cow sound. So it goes forward, it cuts over, that 
pulls back. So the idea is it cuts and then it controls. And that's what you're trying to achieve. So from here, I cut forward and I step around. And this one is then free to come and play. And depending on the length of the weapon, the range of the step, and a million other things, it could do anything from come and hammer into here to try and knock it out of your hand, to take your fingers off, or hammer on here and then take your fingers off, or if you hold it with two hands, take out the arm, to the shoulder, to the neck. And are you that fussy? <laughs> Drive it forward, think about the angle of that knife, you want to roll it forward so it eventually ends up cutting back on itself. And it's all done in there. Now, see how your knife is quite flat? That's not going to stop me. So, there. Right. So, you're cutting back, your centre line, you probably could do what you've done is pull back with your elbow just a little bit too much. So, your centre line must be somewhere around the centre of the knife, otherwise, your, your control point is too loose. Somewhere about here, elbow a bit higher, about there, okay, and then that can cut. That should be parallel to the floor. Diagonally cutting is okay. Some people have it vertical, some have that angle. You know what? There ain't nobody there. They might not know it's nobody there. So it's not that critical. If you've controlled something that's coming in from here, okay, this is your now the closest vulnerability. So this is the area now. I'm not going to be able to get up here too easily because that would be in the way, but there is a vulnerability in this zone that we, we now protect. And again, a lot of the forms of principle rather than actual fight. It's not sequence. One, two, three, four, five. Never going to happen. So here's your vulnerability, for whatever reason, whether it's just a strike or whatever. So we now want to cover that vulnerability. So as you step back, you drag. Okay? That, don't move from there. What I think you've done is pull the cross too much. Because from the front, you only need to cover from that point to that point. Because that's how wide your body is. So anything outside that line is fresh air. And you're, you don't need to cover against fresh air. So bring this, this in further in and further up. And somewhere around there. Okay, so what I'm looking for from the front is a body cover that basically covers that line. This wants to cover up to the shoulder, this wants to cover to the hip. You can only cover so much. The yeah, knives are angled forwards and away, so it's encouraging something to go down and away from you anyway. It's called torda, dragging back, so you're cutting back as you're stepping, dropping the weight on that leg. That foot's a bit too turned, but you want to be facing forward at all times, so turn your, turn your body to face forward and bring your knife with you, so you're about there. Okay? Lock that arm out, or at least have it straight. Okay? Don't have it bent, because anything coming up is going to want to come in hard. Make sure that overlaps, otherwise I'm going to be having your hand off. And make sure this goes up to your shoulder. And it's to encourage something going down. Okay? When you step back, there's always a tendency, having done the first one here, as you step, to lift and press. Where in reality, you step, you pull, and you pull. As you step back, you drag. Use your elbows, and drag, that's better. So, hold your hand exactly where they are, but let go of the knives. And it's exactly the same structure of double laps out. Okay, so if I was here, and I wanted to use a double laps out, for whatever reason, a controller, it's the same structure. You move out the way, and the knives would be here. I wouldn't do a lap so you coming at me hard that way and push out into fresh air because A, I don't need to defend fresh air, and B, if you're running at me, your arms might now go in this way, but your body momentum is still coming forward. It's not steering you anyway, you just smash me in the chest with the shoulder. So from here, what I want to do is take your body momentum and go, okay, you want to carry on, I'm going to help you. Okay? In application, I'll be letting go and coming in, I'll be stepping, I'll be doing whatever. In the knives, I'm controlling a, a defensive structure. So from here, I defend and I defend. I try not to lift and press. And this arm wants to be pretty straight because it could just be, because it's a weapon, it can be coming in all sorts of arcs and wonderfuls. That was too straight. It was like, oh, okay, and drop. Yeah. <laughs> Step back and pull. Like double laps out. Think double laps out. And then think double laps out. Think double laps out. Okay, and then double jump. You do. A little flip. The skill of doing this technique is not in the acceleration of the technique. 
it's in the deceleration of the technique. It's stopping at the right place. So click it, but stop it in the right place. So it's about stopping here rather than, like I said, doing that bit, that's easy. If you don't want to stop it, that's easy. Stopping it where you want to, that is the skill. Accelerating is easy, decelerating. Don't do it by going forward, that's when you lose your elbow structure, it's all in the wrist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Most people get that, lose that control point where the bones are resting against the skeleton, therefore strong because they go with the elbow. It's not in the elbow. Because this is now your elbow. So that's a tiny movement, isn't it? It's just that. It's this. Short, sharp, percussive force. So when people tell you that you might do a one-inch punch, you can also do a one-inch knife. Bagging, the, the short, sharp burst of energy we apply in our movements, applies. So this is us practicing our game with this as well. That's why it's in it so much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, do do, do the, the, the first section from the start because you haven't done that. Chando, yeah, we went straight into the second half of it. So stop, no. Stop moving, take the chance. Stance is too wide. I think the stance is too wide is causing your legs to be straight. Your legs to be straight, so you're not getting any power. Bend it down. Too wide. Because you're very flexible in your hips, you work them really wide anyway. Don't worry, but it just means that your stepping has to be accommodated. Okay. So the first thing we do is four starting. So one, okay. do it again. One, two, three, four. What's wrong with that picture? Okay, so put your hands down. Just face me this way. Give me, give me a front punch. And then another one. And then another one. And then another one. And then another one. And every time you do that, I can't step in. So throw that punch and then retract it. And retract, no. Throw that one and then retract it. And throw that one and then retract it. Yeah. So we, the reason we punch like this is that if we punch like this, someone will step in, yet with the knife you've just done that. And that's why I keep saying basic principles do apply. You strike and tap and you swap. No, you swap Sorry. and then swap. There. There. Why would you retract one and not bring the other forward at the same time? We do it in punches, we do it in the chando. Chando is the name of the strike and it's the way that it gives its form its name. Now pull it back. There, don't put it back until you replace it. Swap, ah. swap, swap, and then that one comes back to the finish and you do a little jump. And then you start with the right. No, repeat. Ah. One, two, that, that one came back first. So start again, go back to the beginning here, right. Left first four, swap them. One, two, three, four, jump, right. One, two, three, four, jump. There you go. It's the stride. Same I have to think of a hip. That's Same. what I'm doing. I have to think of the hip. You hit, hit, hit. You don't have yeah. punches. Drive. Cow doll. Try and get that elbow up and the knife down. Remember, you're trying to stop them pulling it back. So, the flatter it is, the more they're going to slide out. The more angle you create, the more structure. Get that thumb firmly on there. That's it. That strike into the centre line. So the centre line is here. So are you covering it? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. You're now vulnerable here. So you drag it back. Don't press it down. Drag. Now you see you've, you've done. You've done with your arms. What I told. What I talked about at the beginning with your elbows. Sorry, with the knees. Sorry. You went from here, and you went. Ah, I'm going to forget. I've got elbows. You've got elbows. Use the elbow power. Pull it. Use the elbow. 
Use the triceps in the same way you use the lap side. Don't, don't forget you've got elbow structure. So drag with the elbows. And then this short, that's it. And then very short, don't lift them. Just drag with the elbows. Drag with the elbows. And you're just going outside the width of the body a bit. Go back here. Okay? So the way to do it is just turn and face the mirror for a second. And just do that shape. Turn. And just do that shape. There. So what you're looking for from here is this wants to protect your hip. That wants to overlap the hand. And then that knife wants to be up to the shoulder. That's the diagonal line. And at the same time, they want to be leaning forward. Too much, they get too flat, no cover. Too vertical, it gets busted into your face. But you're not now protecting outside the width of the body. Because blocking fresh air here is just a waste of energy. If, if their hit is coming out to the side, you hit somebody. You don't chase the hands. You don't chase the weapons accordingly. So it's quite sure. Yeah, that's bad habit I've had. But this is, this is, this is the refinement we, we always play with. And when I get it perfect, I'll let you know. <laughs> but until then, you've got to remember, make sure you sit back more. See how that foot's See that foot? Yes. I haven't closed the door. Yeah. You know, I've got a massive weapon stick in my hand or something like that. Okay, you're here, your foot's turned out this way. Oh, I'm just going to take that out. I'm not saying I'm not going to hit it if it's turned in. But if it's turned in, and bend the knee as well, it's a lot less likely to collapse. It's going to bloody hurt. I'm going to pee your afternoon off something rotten. You know? But, it, but it's, it's like if I kick you here. It's got structure. If you kick it here, it's going to go tits up. Yeah. You know? Or ball down in there. <laughs> it's going to smart in there. Again, you're forgetting you've got knees. Use your stance. Use your legs. Your legs become part of the equation. We, we know that everything, you know, if you, it's like using your turning stance, it's like using your view mark. As soon as you've got knives in there, don't become hand topped. Everything comes from the, from the ground. Power comes from the floor. That's it, use the legs for the power. I know when you're concentrating on the knives, you forget your legs, learning is a wonderful thing. I was just concentrating on your back windscreen there. That's Thank okay, you. well, you know, you'll only have to let go of the knife once. Turn your hips a little less there, because you don't want to be turning, you're not facing um, me, you want to be dealing with the problem out there, okay? See how that wrist is bent? It's because your elbow's not high enough. So you want to get it more like that. You want a straight line if you can, okay? There, that's it. Very common to see people I had a question about that. Uh, bong sale. Right, straight line. Here. Straight line from this forearm, that angle. What do you mean by straight line? Uh, well, well, maybe that's the wrong way to put it. The, the angle that this arm is at now, my wu sale forearm, is that the same angle? Oh, that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, are we talking ideal or reality? Well, face me. I know we have to be able to pass. Okay, so in, the reality is you, you go to a neutral stance and just do a turning bong time. The reality is that I would, if you have this angle, very different to that angle. Yeah. Cause your problem. Yeah. Let's say that your, your, your arm's flat here. Flat, yeah. Okay, or excessively dropped even, one of the two. What you don't want is that. That's what you can't afford, okay? You can't do view because your hand's trapped high and you can't do lap side because your elbow's trapped low. So one of the two has to, has to give, okay? If your arm is too low and it gets collapsed, that's when Vuji comes into its own. If your arm, the Wusau is higher than that, then that's where the, the, the lap side will take place. Where it goes wrong is not usually the angle of that one, because people are very conscious about covering here, but it's usually the angle of the long side. And when that's wrong, that causes the collapse. So the idea is, ideal, should I say, would be to have the two in the same plane. So that when that pivots, it's going to pass it, control it underneath, because that's exactly what you want. You want Vong to be a controlled collapse, a bit like an airbag in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a steering wheel in a car crash. It goes out to greet, and then it slowly draws them in, so you don't end up smashing the help on the windscreen. So when that punch comes in to here, I'll do it with the hand so you can see it. When that punch comes into here, as you're pushing in towards me, it shouldn't just go, oh, I'm going to collapse, because there's no reason to collapse if I don't have to. At the same time, it shouldn't try and keep fight you out and be too strong. What it should do is as you're pressing, and 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 you're pressing, it, it just swaps the level of responsibility. Obviously a lot faster than that. It's a bit like you're smothering their energy almost going forwards. 
Well, you're just, you're just taking their thoughts on and going, well, okay, you want to go that way, you go that way, that's fine. I'm, I'm all right with that. Okay? What you don't want to do is you want to go that way, I'm not going to let you, door shut, because then the bigger and stronger wind, we might as well just arm wrestle it through. At the same time, you don't just want it to fall because it's got, it's got to go out there and meet and greet. So that's what you're looking to do. You're looking for it to find and then take. So Bongsai goes, where are you? There you are. So slowly Bongsai goes, where is it? There it is. There's my point of contact. I shut even so. I still know that point of contact. I know exactly where the Lapsai wants to go to take over the responsibility. Whether it takes it over defensively forward, offensively backwards, or whichever way it does it, doesn't, becomes irrelevant. Bongsai should therefore be able to be controlled. Yeah. If it's flat and it starts, it will collapse this way. If this is too, too trapped down here, the same thing will apply. So the right bong sao angle with the incorrect wu sao angle will fail, the right, the incorrect bong sao with the right wu sao will fail, but the two mirroring each other means that it will, because it's, everything's controlled by the hinge here, as you're pressing forward, I can always pass that level of responsibility and then come out and play. Okay. So it's a bit like, if you do, it's a bit like rocking a baby. You know, when you stood here, you basically put one forward, one back, and then they change, 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 and change. If there's a differential angle, that's when you get your problem. Because then it becomes a, a big move and it becomes really silly. And you don't want to be lit in that if you don't have to. So by keeping the, the, the bonsai at this angle, as it collapses, the elbow becomes your fixed point. We talk about the fixed elbow position being the, the nucleus of everything we do. So it's like the eye of the hurricane, everything moves around it, but this becomes pretty static. The more you move your elbows, the more weakness you cover because you, you're creating two lots of joints that are working. Where here, I can be doing this, and this becomes very stable, this becomes quite fixed. Very easy to, to move, it takes a little bit of movement just to give inside or outside gate cover, and then the rest of it's done around here somewhere. And that's why the fixed elbow in, in, in Sydney Tower is really important to us. The only time it changes is when we ch choose to move the pivot point to a different place mm. before we come back. Um, so. That, this here is part of that equation. There's your fixed point. We don't want to be lifting it up to grab because it just creates, it's a big move, it weakens the structure and it leaves a little vulnerability. So we just pass. So yeah, the, the bonsai angle becomes quite important. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh.